Hi, and welcome back to this section on common functional design patterns. Now, what are we going to learn in this section? In this first video, we're going to take a look at one particular design pattern called currying. Then we're going to move on to another design pattern called monads. And in particular, we're going to look at the maybe and the list monad. And finally, we're going to take a look at memoization, which is a particular form of caching that is associated with functional programming. So in this video, we're going to take a look at currying or one argument per function. So what are we going to cover in this video? Well, first, we're going to take a brief look at what a design pattern actually is. And then we're going to take a look at how it is possible to bind function arguments to a function. In other words, how you can sort of fix a argument to a function. And finally, we're going to take a look at how this relates to currying, the particular design pattern currying. What is a design pattern? A design pattern is simply a standard solution to a common problem. And what's nice about design patterns is that they're very convenient to think about because essentially design patterns provide us developers with a common language to talk about problems, right? You can describe a particular problem and then you have a name for a design pattern and this allows you to think about it. This allows you to communicate about the problem with other developers, etc. So it's a convenience. Currying is one particular design pattern that's associated strongly with functional programming. So it's a functional design pattern. And it boils down to reducing a function with multiple arguments, for example, an addition function, which takes two arguments, two numbers, to a chain of higher order functions that each take one argument. Now, this sounds very abstract if I phrase it like this, but it's actually really simple. For example, here you see it demonstrated for the add function. So on the left hand side, we have the add function that takes three arguments. So it adds one, two and three, adding up to six. And what we end up with after currying is a function that takes one argument, one, that returns a new function that takes another argument, two in this case, that returns a new function that takes our final argument, three, adding up in the end to six, right? So we go from one function with three arguments to a chain of three functions that each take one argument. Now, let's take a look at what Curian looks like in practice with a practical example, just this same addition function, right? Now, what does this addition function do? It simply adds these three numbers. So if I say print add 10, 100, 1000, and I run that, I get 1110, right? Simple triple addition. Now, what we can do as a first step towards currying is binding arguments to a function. What this means is simply that we fix one of the three arguments And then we create a new function that only has, takes two arguments. And we do this using the standard Python uh, function functools.partial. So we'll, we'll import that from functools, import partial. And then I can say add 10 is partial add comma 10. Now what I do then is bind this value 10 to the A, right? So I get a new function in which the A is fixed to the value 10. And add 10, the resulting higher order function, takes only two arguments. Now what I can do then is add 10, 100. And then I bind also the variable b, right? The argument b, I bind 100 to it. And then I end up with a, another function in which the a is bound to 10, the b is bound to 100, and the c is the only free parameter left. And then what I can do is say print add 10, 100, and I add 1000 and I again get 1110, right? So I have converted this one add function with three arguments to a chain of functions that each take one argument. And that's the basic idea behind currying. Now, doing it in this explicit way using functools.partial works, but it's not really a very elegant way to implement currying. What is much nicer is to implement it using a decorator. So let's implement a very simple currying decorator. There are many ways in which you can implement currying. And one particularly nice currying decorator is in the PyMonad library. And another nice currying decorator is in my own data matrix library. But here we will simply implement a very simple currying decorator. So what we need in addition is from inspect import signature. Signature is in another standard Python function that allows us to check how many arguments a function takes. And then what we do say we define curry. This is going to be our decorator and our decorator takes a function. Our decorator, of course, has an inner function, and we are just going to accept one argument to our inner function. Now, 
what are we going to do? First, we're going to check if the function that we're decorating has multiple arguments. We say if the signature of our function and then the parameters equals one, return the function with the argument. So actually what we're doing here is checking whether f and c, so the function that we're decorating, takes exactly one argument. If it does, then there's no need to curry it, right? Because the point of currying is reducing it to one argument. So if it already has one argument, we can simply evaluate and return it. However, if it takes more than one argument, then what we need to do is return the curry partial punk r. Now this sounds kind of complicated, but what we do is essentially if f and c takes more than one argument, what we do, we bind the argument that was passed to it using functools.partial, and then we curry the result, right? So we essentially do a recursive currying so that we end up with a whole chain of curried functions. This is quite difficult to wrap your head around it. So if you don't understand this right away, try just pause the video and try to go over the whole chain of processing that occurs here. And then we say return inner. And this is our currying decorator. Now, how do we apply our currying decorator? Well, let's simply take our addition function that we defined here. So I'll copy and paste it here. And then I decorate it with our currying function. And now magically, what we can do is say, for example, print at 10, 100, 1000. And then if I run that, you will see that it returns 1110. Right, so we have transformed our add function, which takes three arguments, to a chain of function that first takes one, then takes another, and then takes a final argument. Now, another way to see that we're really dealing with a chain of functions is by doing it like this. We say add 10 is add 10. So add 10 100 is add 10 100. And then we can simply say print add 10 100 and we pass a thousand and what we get is 1110, right? So we really have converted our add function to a chain of higher order functions. And that's the whole idea of currying.